the Noah Methodist Church is happy to produce a lot of different content for the edification of Christ's church throughout the world. This daily segment that you're listening to right now corresponds with the Daily Bible Reading Challenge, which is hosted by Christ Church in Moscow, Idaho. If you want to download the list of readings that they publish for yourself or learn more about this challenge, this initiative, go to BibleReading.ChristKirk.com. I'm Jeffrey Rickman. I'm the pastor here in Nowata, and I read from the Berean Standard Bible, which you can also find at Berean.Bible. Consider subscribing to this podcast to be a part of this daily effort to grow in familiarity with and love of God's Holy Word. Let's dive in for today. Hey there. I know it's a tense season in the life of our country. I assume most of the people watching and listening to this are American. Just want to remind you that God's Word is uh, true every day. It's been true for thousands of years. We'll be true until Christ comes again in glory. As he said, until heaven and earth pass away, not one jot, not one tittle of God's law will pass away. So uh, right now I would ask you to come out of the world, come out of the anxiety that we're all swimming in, and uh, make yourself fully available to these eternal truths that were uh, written down long ago for our good. So with that in mind, let's go over to Deuteronomy chapter 29. God bless you as we attend upon his word together. These are the words of the covenant that the Lord commanded Moses to make with the Israelites in the land of Moab, in addition to the covenant he made with them at Horeb. Horeb. Moses summoned all Israel and proclaimed to them, You have seen with your own eyes everything the Lord did in Egypt to Pharaoh, to all his officials and to all his land. You saw with your own eyes the great trials and those miraculous signs and wonders. Yet to this day the Lord has not given you a mind to understand, eyes to see or ears to hear. For forty years I led you in the wilderness, yet your clothes and sandals did not wear out. You ate no bread and drank no wine or strong drink, so that you might know that I am the Lord your God. When you reached this place, Sihon, king of Heshbon, and Og, king of Bashan, came out against us in battle. But we defeated them. We took their land and gave it as an inheritance to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. So keep and follow the words of this covenant, that you may prosper in all you do. All of you are standing today before the Lord your God, you leaders of tribes, elders, officials, and all the men of Israel, your children and wives and the foreigners in your camps who cut your wood and draw your water, so that you may enter into the covenant of the Lord your God, which he is making with you today, and into his oath, and so that he may establish you today as his people, and he may be your God as he promised you and as he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am making this covenant and this oath not only with you, but also with those who are standing here with us today in the presence of the Lord our God, as well as with those who are not here today. For you yourselves know how we lived in the land of Egypt and how we passed through the nations on the way here. You saw the abominations and idols among them, made of wood and stone, of silver and gold. Make sure there is no man or woman, clan or tribe among you today whose heart turns away from the Lord our God to go and worship the gods of those nations. Make sure there is no root among you that bears such poisonous and bitter fruit. Because when such a person hears the words of this oath, he invokes a blessing on himself saying, I will have peace even though I walk in the stubbornness of my own heart. This will bring disaster on the watered land as well as the dry. The Lord will never be willing to forgive him. Instead, his anger and jealousy will burn against that man, and every curse written in this book will fall upon him. The Lord will blot out his name from under heaven and single him out from all the tribes of Israel for disaster, according to all the curses of the covenant written in this book of the law. Then the generation to come, your sons who follow you and the foreigner who comes from a distant land, will see the plagues of the land and the sicknesses the Lord has inflicted on it, and its soil will be a burning waste of sulfur and salt, 
unsown and productive, with no plant growing on it, just like the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his fierce anger. So all the nations will ask, Why has the Lord done such a thing to this land? Why this great outburst of anger? And the people will answer, It is because they abandoned the covenant of the Lord, the, law, the God of their fathers, which he made with them when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. They went and served other gods, and they worshipped gods they had not known, gods that the Lord had not given to them. Therefore the anger of the Lord burned against this land, and he brought upon it every curse written in this book. The Lord uprooted them from their land in his anger, rage, and great wrath, and he cast them into another land where they are today. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and to our children forever, so that we may follow all the words of this law. Deuteronomy chapter 30. When all these things come upon you, the blessings and curses I have set before you, and you call them to mind in all the nations to which the Lord your God has banished you. And when you and your children return to the Lord your God and obey his voice with all your heart and all your soul according to everything I am giving you today, then he will restore you from captivity and have compassion on you and gather you from all the nations to which the Lord your God has scattered you. Even if you had been banished to the farthest horizon, he will gather you and return you from there. And the Lord your God will bring you into the land your fathers possessed, and you will take possession of it. He will cause you to prosper and multiply more than your fathers. The Lord your God will circumcise your hearts and the hearts of your descendants, and you will love him with all your heart and with all your soul, so that you may live. Then the Lord your God will put all these curses upon your enemies who hate you and persecute you. And you will again obey the voice of the Lord and follow all his commandments I am giving you today. So the Lord your God will make you abound in all the work of your hands and in the fruit of your womb, the offspring of your livestock, and the produce of your land. Indeed, the Lord will again delight in your goodness, as he delighted in that of your fathers. If you obey the Lord your God by keeping his commandments and statutes that are written in his book of the law, and if you turn to him with all your heart and with all your soul, for this commandment I give you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. It is not in heaven that you should need to ask who will ascend into heaven to get it for us and proclaim it that we may obey it. And it is not beyond the sea that you should need to ask who will cross the sea to get it for us and proclaim it that we may obey it. But the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so that you may obey it. See, I have set before you today life and goodness, as well as death and disaster. For I am commanding you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, statutes, and ordinances, so that you may live and increase, and the Lord your God may bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away, and you do not listen, but are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them. I declare to you today that you will surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you today, and I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, so that you and your descendants may live and that you may love the Lord your God, obey him, and hold fast to him. For he is your life, and he will prolong your life in the land that the Lord swore to give your fathers to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Deuteronomy 31. When Moses had finished speaking these words to all Israel, he said to them, I am now 120 years old. I am no longer able to come and go, and the Lord has said to me, You shall not cross the Jordan. 
The Lord your God himself will cross over ahead of you. He will destroy these nations before you, and you will dispossess them. Joshua will cross ahead of you, as the Lord has said. And the Lord will do to them as he did to Sihon and Og, the kings of the Amorites, when he destroyed them along with their land. The Lord will deliver them over to you, and you must do to them exactly as I have commanded you. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified of them, for it is the Lord, your God, who goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Then Moses called for Joshua and said to him in the presence of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you will go with this people into the land that the Lord swore to their fathers to give them, and you shall give it to them as an inheritance. The Lord himself goes before you. He will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid or discouraged. So Moses wrote down this law and gave it to the priests, the sons of Levi, who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and to all the elders of Israel. Then Moses commanded them, at the time of every seven years, at the appointed time in the year of remission of debt, during the Feast of Tabernacles, when all Israel comes before the Lord your God at the place he will choose, you are to read this law in the hearing of all Israel. Assemble the people, men, women, children, and the foreigners within your gates, so that they may listen and learn to fear the Lord your God and to follow carefully all the words of this law. Then their children who do not know the law will listen and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as you live in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, the time of your death is near. Call Joshua and present yourselves at the tent of meeting so that I may commission him. So Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves at the tent of meeting. Then the Lord appeared at the tent in a pillar of cloud, and the cloud stood over the entrance to the tent. And the Lord said to Moses, You will soon rest with your fathers, and these people will rise up and prostitute themselves with the foreign gods of the land they are entering. They will forsake me and break the covenant I have made with them. On that day, my anger will burn against them, and I will abandon them and hide my face from them, so that they will be consumed, and many troubles and afflictions will befall them. On that day they will say, Have not these disasters come upon us because our God is no longer with us? And on that day I will surely hide my face because of all the evil that they have done by turning to other gods. Now therefore, write down for yourselves this song and teach it to the Israelites. Have them recite it so that it may be a witness for me against them. When I have brought them into the land that I swore to give their fathers, a land flowing with milk and honey. They will eat their fill and prosper. Then they will turn to other gods and worship them, and they will reject me and break my covenant. And when many troubles and afflictions have come upon them, this song will testify against them because it will not be forgotten from the lips of their descendants. For I know their inclination, even before I bring them into the land that I swore to give them. So that very day, Moses wrote down this song and taught it to the Israelites. Then the Lord commissioned Joshua, son of Nun, and said, Be strong and courageous, for you will bring the Israelites into the land that I swore to give them, and I will be with you. When Moses had finished writing in a book the words of this law from beginning to end, he gave this command to the Levites who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. Take this book of the law and place it beside the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, so that it, it may remain there as a witness against you. For I know how rebellious and stiff-necked you are. If you are already rebelling against the Lord while I am still alive, how much more will you rebel after my death? Assemble before me all the elders of your tribes and all your officers, so that I may speak these words in their hearing, and call heaven and earth to witness against them. For I know that after my death you will become utterly corrupt and turn from the path I have commanded you. And in the days to come, disaster will befall you because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger by the work of your hands. 
Then Moses recited aloud to the whole assembly of Israel the words of this song from beginning to end. And we don't get the song today. So I guess you have to be a part of it tomorrow too. Mark chapter 15 is where we're going now. Early in the morning, the chief priests, elders, scribes, and the whole Sanhedrin devised a plan. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. So Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. And the chief priests began to accuse him of many things. Then Pilate questioned him again, Have you no answer? Look how many charges they're bringing against you. But to Pilate's amazement, Jesus made no further reply. Now it was Pilate's custom at the feast to release to the people a prisoner of their choosing. And a man named Barabbas was imprisoned with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd went up and began asking Pilate to keep his custom. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? Pilate asked, for he knew it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas to them instead. So Pilate asked them again, What then do you want me to do with the one you call the king of the Jews? And they shouted back, Crucify him. Why? asked Pilate. What evil has he done? But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! And wishing to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is the praetorium, and called the whole company together. They dressed him in a purple robe, twisted together a crown of thorns, and set it on his head. And they began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews! They kept striking his head with a staff and spitting on him. And they knelt down and bowed before him. After they had mocked him, they removed the purple cloak, no, purple robe, and put his own clothes back on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. Now Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and the soldiers forced him to carry the cross of Jesus. They brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him. They also divided his garments by casting lots to decide what each of them would take. It was the third hour when they crucified him, and the charge inscribed against him read, The King of the Jews. Along with Jesus, they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by heaped abuse on him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who are going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, come down from that cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and scribes mocked him among themselves, saying, He saved others, but he cannot save himself. Let the Christ the king of Israel, come down now from the cross so that we may see and believe. And even those who were crucified with him berated him. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. At the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And when some of those standing nearby heard this, they said, Behold, he's calling Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine. He put it on a reed and held it up for Jesus to drink, saying, Leave him alone. Let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. But Jesus let out a loud cry and breathed his last. And the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion standing there in front of Jesus saw how he had breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. And there were also women watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the Younger, and of Joseph and Salome. These women had followed Jesus and ministered to him while he was in Galilee. 
and there were many other women who had come up to Jerusalem with him. Now it was already evening, since it was preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath. Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent council member who himself was waiting for the kingdom of God, boldly went to Pilate to ask for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised to hear that Jesus was already dead, so he summoned the centurion to ask if it was so. When Pilate had confirmed it with the centurion, he granted the body to Joseph. So Joseph bought a linen cloth, took down the body of Jesus, wrapped it in the cloth, and placed it in a tomb that had been cut out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph saw where his body was placed. Mark chapter 16. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so they could go and anoint the body of Jesus. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they went to the tomb. They were asking one another, who will roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, even though it was extremely large. When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they put him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So the women left the tomb and ran away, trembling and bewildered, and in their fear they did not say a word to anyone. Early on the first day of the week after Jesus had risen, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had driven out seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him, who were mourning and weeping, and when they heard that Jesus was alive and she had seen him, they did not believe it. After this, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them as they walked along in the country. And they went back and reported it to the rest, but they did not believe them either. Later, as they were eating, Jesus appeared to the eleven and rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up snakes with their hands, and they will drink every deadly poison, any deadly poison, (laughs) and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not harm them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will be made well. After the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere. And the Lord worked through them, confirming his word by the signs that accompanied it. All right, we're going to jump over to Psalm 22 now for some language that should sound familiar. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my words of groaning? I cry out by day, oh my God, but you do not answer, and by night, but I have no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted, they trusted, and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were set free. They trusted in you and were not disappointed. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by men and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They sneer and shake their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord deliver him. Let the Lord rescue him since he delights in him. Yet you brought me forth from the womb. You made me secure at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast upon you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me, strong bulls of Bashan encircle me. 
They open their jaws against me like lions that roar and maul. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are disjointed. My heart is like wax. It melts away within me. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of the earth, in the dust of death. For dogs surround me. A band of evil men encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. But you, O Lord, be not far off. O my strength, come quickly to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of wild dogs. Save me from the mouth of the lion. At the horns of the wild oxen, you have answered me. I will proclaim your name to my brothers. I will praise you in the assembly. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All descendants of Jacob, honor him. All offspring of Israel, revere him. For he has not despised or detested the torment of the afflicted. He has not hidden his face from him, but has attended to his cry for help. My praise for you resounds in the great assembly. I will fulfill my vows before those who fear you. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. At the ends of the earth, all the ends of the earth, will remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him, even those unable to preserve their lives. Posterity will serve him. They will declare the Lord to a new generation. They will come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn. All that he has done. Finally, Hebrews chapter 5. Every high priest is appointed from among men to represent them in matters relating to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and misguided since he himself is beset by weakness. That is why he is obligated to offer sacrifices for his own sins as well as for the sins of the people. No one takes this honor upon himself. He must be called by God just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not take upon himself the glory of becoming a high priest, but he was called by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have become your father. And in another passage, God says, You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus' earthly life, he, was offered, he offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. And he was designated by God as high priest in the order of Melchizedek. We have much to say about this, but it is hard to explain because you were dull of hearing. Although by this time you ought to be teachers... You need someone to reteach you the basic principles of God's Word. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is still an infant, inexperienced in the message of righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained their senses to distinguish good from evil. This is the Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Obviously, the readings all work quite well together today. Deuteronomy warns of disobedience. The gospel tells us of Christ's sacrifice. Psalm 22 contextualizes Jesus' words, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Hebrews ties it all together. Jesus, the great high priest of the order of Melchizedek, the son 
perfected in suffering, disciplined by his loving God, made perfect to intercede with God for our sins and perfect us in holiness. The warning still stands. God has made a covenant with us. If we are faithless, many curses follow. But if we're faithful, nothing but blessing. Let's be faithful. I'll see you tomorrow.